that will describe the specific subskills, the specific context and the specific skills in different levels of achievement. The criteria then, sometimes called rubrics, is a table of reference that describes the specific learning that is to be assessed and their, level, and their levels of performance. This is an example of a criteria that, um, is, that can be used with segundo medio students if we want to assess identification of specific information in a written text. As you can see in this table, we have four different levels, each one labeled with one quality, as one quality, ne necesita reforzamiento, satisfactorio, bueno and ex excelente, and a description of the actions that the student does in order to qualify for that specific level. So for example, satisfactorio is extrae alguna información explícita in the text that is described in the top box of the second column. That is to say, texto sobre temas concretos y que contienen estructuras simples. This is the essential instrument that we need to use for the whole process of assessment. This criteria needs to be public. That is to say, students need to know it and probably curricular authorities in schools as well, before the assessment procedure is applied. The reason for this is that if students know before what they're going to be assessed on, they will be able to concentrate on those aspects and to leave out other aspects that they may think are going to be assessed. For students to understand this, this criteria, it needs to be written in simple and clear language. Avoid using, using technical terms. Avoid use, using complex descriptions so as to make those descriptions as accessible as possible. Once again, Students have to know what is expected from them before they are given the assessment task. Let me make a parenthesis over here and, and let you know and discuss that the criteria, the advantages of having criteria available for students and for, for teachers as well, um, is that for teachers, for example, we can also use this criteria to observe students' performance in class, not only in the context of a formal assessment procedure. That can be formalized in a checklist, for example, of the actions and the frequencies of the actions that we are aiming at assessing, um, so that we, we later can use that information as a reference to validly interpret test results. Students also can use that information the inf and, and the descriptions in the criteria to focus in the class on those aspects that are valued. They can also use that information to assess their own performance and thus promoting, thus promoting learning autonomy. And this information can also, and this table can also be used by students to assess fairly their peers, 
thus promoting cooperation and teamwork. So let's talk a little bit about the task itself. The first thing we need to say is that not only pen and paper tests are, are the option, we also have other alternatives. We have, for example, role plays. We can ask students to produce an object like a poster or a letter or a magazine article or a radio interview. We're going to choose the procedure that best fits the characteristics of students on the one hand and also the objective of our assessment. The important thing here is to try and simulate as closely as possible the real communication, the real life communication situation. Another important aspect that we need to consider when we are selecting the task is that we need to make sure that students are familiar with the kind of activities they are going to be involved in during this task. The reason for this is that if they don't know what they're going to do or how they're going to do what they're expected to do, they're going to focus more on the mechanics of the task rather than focusing on giving their best in the, in the assessment task. Also, it is very important that the instructions that we're going to give students are clear and simple so that students understand exactly what they have to do before they start doing it. Once again, the reason for this is that if they don't understand beforehand what they have to do, they're going to lose concentration on what is important, which is showing at their best what they've learned. A key issue is that a task also needs to be economical and well-balanced. That is to say, we use all the resources, time and materials, that are necessary and enough to gather the information that we need to make useful interpretations of, their stu of, of, of our students' performance. Here's an example of a kind of activity, um, a kind of task that um, is not quite useful in the context of gathering information of what students have learned. And it's one of the most popular as well. This type of um, activity, this type of task, works with the logic, the logic of correct and incorrect, yes or no. Um, so let's have a look at it. This question is, the text is about A, the most popular pop singers in the 20th century, B, the importance of pop music in contemporary history. C, what the Beatles and Madonna have in common. And D, none of the above. As a student, what I'm expected to do is to choose the correct alternative. But later, the teacher needs to interpret that information. What conclusions can the, can the teacher get if the student chooses the correct alternative? Well, more than he, it is correct, and that probably this student is able to understand the text as a whole, general comprehension, nothing else can be said about it. If the student, on the other hand, chooses any of the other alternatives, all the information the teacher will get from, from, those, from that answer is that the student is...